Meta has announced a new AI chip that is supposedly super powerful and you can see a visual right here of what it looks like and stands for MTIA which is short for Meta Training and Inference Accelerator. So now let us deep dive into what exactly can this thing do. So the reason behind this is that Meta saw that GPUs were not training at the recommended work levels that they wanted to for their scalability. And in turn, their solution was to create this family of recommendation specific MTIA again, which means Meta Training and Inference Accelerator ASICs. And in turn, this is the result that they came to. And what's interesting is they've integrated this into PyTorch to create what they state as a wholly optimized ranking system. So they're still going to continue and support PyTorch 2.0 and that essentially supercharges how PyTorch operates at the compiler level. So now let's take a look at a quick video where they show some highlights regarding this new chip. So here are the short sections from this video. They talk about some things that Meta's data centers include such as feed, ranking, content, recommendations, and basically they said the traditional CPUs were not able to handle this, which was mentioned in the brief summary above. And basically they have created their own tailored solution and you can actually see what the MTIA looks like, which actually looks quite beautiful for a chip. And basically they state by having it in house, it allows them to customize it exactly to what they want. And in turn brings the power to the chip more efficiently and also you can reduce the cost because again having it in-house allows them to see exactly what's going on and in turn tailor it specifically to what they want to do. Now here we can see a still image of the MTIA version 1 chip and looks quite beautiful not going to lie and in terms of the size you can see from the video that it was not too crazy and it was actually could fit into the palm of most people's hands. So we're in an incredible age where people can create something so intelligent and powerful in the size of a tiny little square that can fit into the palm of your hand. And only is going to be improving from the years following up and eventually things are going to get smaller and smaller to the point where I can't even fathom how incredible some of the new technology out there is going to become. So some brief background in this chip is that in 2020 they actually designed the first generation MTIA ASIC for Meta's internal workload. So this is not something that just came out a few days ago. They've been working on this project for quite some time and you can see some of the stats regarding the actual design. And here this actually showcases a visual of some of the features. So let's go ahead and just go through some of these real quick. So here the accelerator is equipped with a dedicated control subsystem and this runs the system firmware which we can see here highlighted in the blue. And then as we continue, take a look at the now outer edges. This is the memory subsystem which uses their code name for the off chip DRAM resources and this can scale up to 128 gigabytes. And as we continue, we can see additional details regarding this actual chip. And then I'll just go ahead and scroll through more of this just to showcase the visuals. And then we have the grid inside, which has an 8x8 configuration. And then more details regarding each. So each P is equipped with two processor cores and one of them is equipped with the vector extension and a number of fixed function units that are optimized for pouring critical operations, such as the matrix multiplication, accumulation, data movement, and nonlinear function calculation. So now for most people, like myself, a lot of these terms and details regarding AI chips might go right over your head, but I still think this is a really cool visual to see what exactly is the behind the scenes regarding this design. In terms of the actual system design, they are mounted on small dual M2 boards and this allows it for easier aggregation into a server. So we can see a visual right here of what it looks like. And again, the size of this thing is so small. And for most people, if you're in the space, it might make sense. But for the average Joe, they don't understand the level of intelligence and just sheer power in this little thing to power literally millions, not billions, if not who knows how many data points that they're gonna receive from this. 
it's just quite incredible. Now, another thing that they mentioned was this Meta's Research Super Cluster. Now, I think this is a really cool visual that they have listed on their website, and let's just go through it together. So basically, check this out. Meta has completed their second phase, which they have for their RSC for short, Research Super Cluster. And from their site, they say that it's apparently one of the fastest AI supercomputers in the world. Now, just quick pause on this right here. As of now, all these major tech companies are battling to be the best, the fastest, the smartest, the most efficient, uses the least amount of power, the cheapest, you name it, whatever percentage that they could improve upon, they're currently working on that right now because whoever ends up being the best will get the most market share and typically the most user adoption, depending if you obviously they're selling the product like Nvidia and et cetera, AI companies. So just as of today, the progress we've made is already monumental. And in six months from now, one year from now, the AI technology that's gonna come out from these companies are going to be absolutely incredible. So we won't even understand how smart some of these computers are in the next few months until they fully announce this. Now, let's see some more details regarding the RSC. And here, this is some crazy stats. They said that they've achieved five exaflops of computing power. Now, I never heard of this word before until I saw this post. And basically, what one exaflop is, is a quintillion, which is a billions billion of calculations per second. And they actually go ahead and explain this in normal people terms, which basically is right here. It says you have to perform one calculation every, let's read this out, 31 billion 688 million 765 thousand years just to match what one exaflop computer system can do in just one second so this wasn't 31 billion seconds this was 31 billion years to match it in just one second so i don't know about you but that is absolutely mind-blowing speed that this apparently can do so I don't even know how you can compare what a test subject would be to compare this amount of years it would take but again the math in most people's brains most likely could not do the speed that this currently can work on and here is some more statistics regarding the background so the performance they have achieved is using 2000 NVIDIA DGX A100 systems as RSC's compute nodes and as a result, this is a total of 16,000 NVIDIA A100 Tensor Core GPUs, which is a lot of GPUs, connected via an NVIDIA Quantum Infinity Band 16 terabyte fabric network. Now, if you've been following AI space, a lot of these companies have been using NVIDIA's A100, and the fact that it's using this amount right here is already a big feat. So here are some things that they highlighted for the RSC that they've been able to accelerate their resource. So one is Llama, which I've made some videos regarding that. No language left behind, universal speech translator, and theorem proving. So now let's go ahead and look at more details regarding this. So how does the research get accelerated? Well, take a look at this visual. They showcase different levels and times of processing based off of the token. So for example, 620 tokens at 3,500 GPUs is 10. Then we have 21 days, 380. And then we have 50 days at 120 tokens at 800 GPUs. So you can see here, this is a significant difference and depending on the use case, obviously can take longer. But now as you can see, this is how they're working on accelerating the time it takes to complete their research. Now here's some quick highlights regarding some of the companies that they've spotlighted in the previous post and basically llama 1.4 trillion tokens in 21 days so they actually showcased the difference and we can see the trained the llama 65b and the smaller llama 33b on 1.4 trillion tokens and their smallest model llama 7b trained on 1 trillion tokens and basically the largest llama 65b that was trained in 2048 NVIDIA A100 GPUs 
the model trained it on 380 tokens per second per GPU within 21 days. So again, if you want to deep dive into Llama, definitely you can see some more details regarding this, but this is just some major statistics that they've made waves on in the AI space. The next one's called No Language Left Behind, which I really like this one because it is focusing on translation. So here it mentions that they translate across 200 languages, which was groundbreaking. And if you have been following, for example, Google Palm 2, as of now, for myself, I use Google Translator if I need to translate some language. There are obviously other language translation apps. However, I feel the most comfortable using Google because I've yet to find a solution that has a better, more accurate translation for the most general languages that I've used it for. Obviously, for more specific, not as popular ones, maybe you could argue, but as of now, it seems like AI, I've seen a lot of updates regarding AI and multi-languages. So essentially focusing on translation, which I keep seeing as a big deal because if you saw in Palm 2's update, the ability to work international borders with someone in different countries, for example, in coding, and you can have your, for example, written in English, your code, and then you can have someone in Korea, Japan, any country that doesn't speak English have their code commented in their specific language and that way you can essentially work double places without having to be fluent in each other's language and again this obviously hasn't specified specific use cases but just imagine the amount of collaboration that's going to be done the minute that all these ai systems have fully perfected the ai language model with very very high accuracy now here again speaking of languages universal speech translator they say here 50% reduction in training time. And basically, they're using RSC to train the world's first AI powered translation system for a primary oral language, which enabled Huiken speakers to hold conversations with English speakers in a real time. So now, this was actually very interesting because, again, being able to just type on text languages, you can translate that. That's fairly easy, even on messaging on your phone. But to speak to someone in real time, that is a much harder thing to understand. Now, I've seen actual products and apps where they created a little like microphone that you speak into and then it spits out language in there. So again, regarding the behind the scenes of this, I'm not exactly sure what they're working on for that. But in the future, just in general, if they have something where you can literally just talk and then someone else picks it up with a headphone, for example, whatever technology they make, and it understands in their language, that's going to be life-changing. And the last one they have is the theorem proving. And basically, this is for advanced mathematical problems, which most people might not understand. They don't really care about math, but basically almost everything that you have worked on or are currently working on involves some sort of math, whether you realize it or not. And the fact that this is focusing on something such as advanced math problems is also an incredible thing. So overall, these were some quick updates on the Meta AI chip and some other features they're working on. So if you wanna see the latest updates in the AI space, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe.